tonight, Typhoon Muifa at Category 3 Strength as it approaches Taiwan and Japan. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for September 11th. Right now we have a typhoon in the western Pacific and a new tropical depression that has formed there that is probably going to become our next typhoon whilst the western hemisphere is full of remnants now with three once uh, potent hurricanes uh, now on the hurricane graveyard belt. It's day 103 of Atlantic hurricane season, the remnants of Earl off uh, Newfoundland and the remnants of Danielle which are slowly but surely approaching the Iberian Peninsula. Also an area of interest that will emerge off Africa now at a 10%, there were three areas of interest yesterday so that's backed off quite a bit. Remnants of K now moving away from California on day 120 of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season. We've also marked an area of interest at a 20% chance along the coast of Mexico. It's a pretty uncertain situation, we'll check out the models later. In the Western Pacific, of course, Moifa there, getting rather uncomfortably close to the coastlines now. The Ayama Islands in particular uh, a concern point. 15W is should remain away from any islands as it moves out to sea. 40% chance in between the two and no areas of interest elsewhere around the world or as pictured in the Indian Ocean. We had a small chance in Vest not long ago but that uh, has now also been extinguished. So let's check the latest satellite imagery. This is the Atlantic right now. You can see a massive hole where Earl used to be, uh, a fully transitioned extratropical cyclone and it happened pretty damn quick when you compare it to how it looked yesterday on our bulletin. Newfoundland getting a pretty raw deal with uh, strong winds and heavy rainfall there. A few tropical uh, thunderstorms in the Gulf of Mexico. Eastern Pacific looking fairly quiet now as K uh, continues its demise, not much left of her. Uh, and in just south of Mexico, one or two little disturbances bubbling up and that's what we're going to be watching closely moving forward. However, in the Western Pacific, this is the main feature of tonight. It is Typhoon Moifa. You can see its edges, the banding, uh, now reaching the Ayama Islands and Miyakajima. And you get the thought of deja vu here. Here we go again with another typhoon moving through this area uh, barely a week after Typhoon Hinamnor. Northern Taiwan will probably get substantial amounts of rain once again and possibly a significant part of the wind field uh, which will stretch down the coast of eastern Taiwan depending on just how far west this storm goes. Unlike Kinam Noor, it will be quite a bit smaller, not quite as intense uh, and it is expected to move further west, uh, a, a, a bigger threat to the coast of China rather than Korea this time around. But as you can see, looking pretty decent on satellite imagery, an eye opening out, a very uh, warm eye and a clear eye. Uh, cloud tops a little bit lacking right now on the northern side, which is what's holding it back a little bit and why it's only a minimum Category 3 right now. But the JTWC are expecting a Category 4 peak with 140 mile per hour winds and certainly it has the chance to do that over decent favorable conditions. As long as it doesn't slow down too much, which is something else that we're watching, it potentially slowing down quite a bit in an eerily similar place to where Hinamnor did. Indian Ocean looking fairly quiet, although a lot of rain blowing over the uh, Indian subcontinent there. Uh, so lots of rain expected for that whole basin, sub-basin really for the next uh, 14 days or less. And this is the Australian region. We've still got a few uh, issues earlier on with the Himawari 8 satellite, but it looks like most of those have now been rectified. Um, and generally, a fairly quiet picture across that region. Sea surface temperatures right now, uh, a cool pool, even more established after K is passing. 
Sea surface temperature is where it is right now, around 20 degrees Celsius, so there's no coming back from that. Uh, near to the coast of southern Mexico though, nearly 30 degrees Celsius, so ample conditions for the next system. Earl's cold trail also noticeable there, and Danielle's even when you look towards the northeast. But generally in the Atlantic, as long as storms don't move exactly over those areas, then the next storm will have a pretty decent shot. North Indian Ocean, 30 degrees all along the coast, so any later season activity when we look towards our second peak, which is usually in the fall months, uh, we could be looking at some significant activity. Muifa there, over 28 degrees Celsius waters, it's on the western edge of Hinnomnor's upwelling, and that tropical depression towards the east, it's over around 30 degrees Celsius waters right now, uh, decreasing to about 28 shortly. So Western Pacific looking like a powerhouse, just waiting for storms to take advantage. Uh, in terms of anomalies, it's above average for most of the Western Pacific, apart from where Hinnomnor was. And in the Atlantic, same too, except for where Earl was and Danielle. Two small little areas of below average temperatures elsewhere, though, is way above average. Gulf of Mexico, a little bit closer to the average. And in terms of the oceanic heat content, it's boiling hot in the Caribbean Sea, into the Gulf of Mexico and up the Gulf Stream. So any storms that end up in those areas are going to have a field day with energy. Western Pacific, same too for the Philippine Sea areas. Where Muifa is, it might get a little bit of a helping shortly as it's off the coast of Taiwan, which might propel it to Category 4 status. Eastern Pacific, only a small area. Computer models looking forward then, this is a look at the Atlantic uh, and unfortunately I'm unable to see this imagery because the uh, software is playing up again, uh, but I believe it shows the remnants of Earl and Danielle continuing, not much else happening in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, Danielle's remnants eventually go to trouble Portugal and Spain, not particularly strong winds though, and Earl's remnants continue to hover about and eventually, I think, move off towards the north. In the eastern Pacific, it is letting me see this one, thankfully, Kay's remnants continue southwards, and it's only later on in the model run that you tend to see the uh, new storms that might eventually form, and there they are towards the end of that five-day period. GFS suggesting two storms. I would say that's quite unlikely. The other models are all suggesting one. You can never be too cautious though, but I would certainly suggest that it's probably going to be one system that has a significant chance of forming later on down the line. Coming to category one there on that image. Uh, the Western Pacific, Muifa there slowing down, uh, category three, maybe even a little bit of a loop, and then it moves northwards. That other typhoon speeding along there, not affecting any land areas. And Muifa then moving north of Shanghai and making landfall briefly in eastern China uh, and then possibly moving back out over the Yellow Sea for a little bit before another landfall. And this is all in the next five days. Uh, typhoon force winds for quite a large area, over 20 million could be affected by uh, gale force conditions. And here is the precipitation estimates for this entire area as well. Still some big concerns there, as some white areas on the imagery and that is well over 25 inches of rain. Some of the Ayama Islands could receive that amount as well at worst case scenario. Let's call it 20 inches though at the moment that they might expect uh, and that would be uh, uh, 500 millimeters of rain and half that on Miyakojima, maybe a little bit more than that as well. Moving up to the coast of China uh, and Taiwan, four inches there, that's 200 millimeters, and further up the coast, double that, maybe even triple that to 300 millimeters on the east coast of China uh, at 12 inches for large areas, including Shanghai. Eventually, the storm's track takes it towards North Korea. This is also the forecast for the Pacific, and you'll notice that later on in this run, uh, we take a look at a seven day period on these rainfall models. Uh, you can see large areas of rain, mostly at sea, but some of it creeping over the coastline into Mexico, and some areas, once again, could get over the 300 millimeters line. That's 12 inches, but quite widespread areas moving inland there could get eight inches, which is 200 millimeters, quite substantial amounts uh, for that region. Uh, and maybe even heavier stuff if this model run verifies and we actually get a storm. Uh, and 
as we know the GFS can underperform based on its somewhat lower resolution considering it's a global model uh, so certainly on guard for higher rainfall amounts along the entire coast there from potential storms in the next week check the longer range then days 5 through 10 here is the Atlantic Ocean some high latitude systems there but there's one little pop up there in the lower latitudes the tropics a Cape Verde type system but a short lived one but GFS has been calling for things like this for a while and none of them have ended up transpiring uh, and look towards the east coast of the US as well maybe a possible system forming up there I doubt that's going to be fully tropical however uh, it doesn't look tropical to me at all there in those last frames and here is the eastern pacific if the gfs has its way there's two hurricanes one of them makes landfall very quickly the other one is flirting with hurricane status for a long time and hangs about looks like a third storm happens there towards the end of that 10 day period so a bit of an upheaval going on in the eastern pacific there if this model is to be believed but other models suggesting that it is only going to be one system and that's what i would go with for the time being well, that's all the important stuff done with. Uh, you can take a look at the Force 13 merch store by scanning that code. Uh, you can just get your phone up and scan it on our screen if you want. And you can take a look at all of our uh, merch store, including the Still Waiting for Hone t-shirt and animations on request, individual and full season. Well then, into the silly range of models, let's take a look at what the Atlantic has to offer then. And it's going to be a Caribbean-based uh, tropical storm that forms and then affects Florida, stalls over there for quite a bit, and then moves off towards the northeast, becomes a hurricane, there it goes. Still rather slow movement, and then being dragged along by a long uh, ocean-spreading frontal system that you often get to see in the later part of the season. So not out of the ordinary to see a track like that. Maybe it's a little bit early in the season to be seeing that. It's usually a late season kind of track that produces that kind of response there, but you never know. Eastern Pacific, what happens to that second storm? It gets much larger. It's been in the same place for quite a while. Eventually becomes a hurricane again properly. And category two, maybe category three there as it moves off towards the Northwest. You can still get some pretty impressive hurricanes in September in the Eastern Pacific out there over that area. Um, and yeah, interesting. And maybe another storm behind that as well. But that's in the very long range. I wouldn't put any kind of confidence into anything that you see here western pacific well goodness me what a mess here with two storms there blowing up typhoons moving through japan one of them two more systems forming out of sea and then another one that's five storms in a period there in the long range up to day 16 five new storms actually that would be six because it didn't count the one that we're currently watching 15w so a remarkable period of activity in the western pacific if that was to transpire ended with an extremely powerful landfall for japan which gfs has been suggesting and hinting at for quite some time now but it's still extremely long range on September 11th, 1992, a typh uh, typhoon, Hurricane Iniki was about to make landfall on the western islands of Hawaii. I think it was Kauai, the island, on the western side. Um, and it was to cause extremely devastating consequences over there, even though it was a small area of impact. It was an astonishingly uh, difficult uh, sight after the storm moved through making a category 4 landfall ah, well then back to this year hard to believe that 1992 was 30 years ago the next name on the atlantic naming list is fiona in the eastern pacific it's lester and in the central pacific it's hone same names as we had in 1992 in the Western Pacific, the next name on the naming list is Murbok, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Sitrang. So far, we've seen 55 storms this year around the world. Might be about to see number 56 in the Western Pacific. And in the Australian region, Darien is next up. The Southwest Indian Ocean starts with Ashley, and in the South Pacific, next up is Harley. I'm away for a week now, so you won't see any more tropical weather bulletins by me. The team will pick up the next tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.